Hey, this podcast holds nothing sacred. Join Alan, Marcos, and Josue. This is Life, Tech, and Sundry. And what is Sundry? It's our experiences put in a melting pot to the internet. So join us on this wild ride called the LTS Podcast. Follow us at LT Sundry on Twitter, LTS.pod on Instagram, Life, Tech, and Sundry on YouTube, and all your favorite podcast distribution services. Stay frosty. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LTS Podcast. With me today, I have Alan. And obviously, your speaker is Marco. Say hello to the people there, Alan. What's going on, Marcos? How's everybody doing? Happy 4th of July. <laughs> um, thank you for having me back on the podcast, Marcos. I can't wait for the conversation. Let's do this. So yeah, um, obviously, dear listeners, as, to, as of the recording, it's the 4th of July. No, so oh, screaming eagle. We need a screaming eagle. We can do that now. Yes. Where is Mr. J when you need him? Yes. Where is E? Eagle. Let's see. Screaming eagle. Is it like towards the bottom? Yes. I'm pretty sure. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Good, good listener. Screaming eagle. Very good, sir. Eagle. But yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put in the flag overlay over here with the Screaming Eagle soundboard and post. But yeah, so happy 4th for all, for all of you who listen and, you know, the 4th of July. Thank you. You're in the, if you're in the States, obviously. Yes, sir. Or or worldwide. Or worldwide if you're American and you're somewhere else. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, for me personally, in my personal life, if, just to open up the conversation... I yes. finished doing my um, some certifications that I needed for for job stuff. It's exciting, and uh, I've been pulling in like all nighters, you know, going to work, learning the getting certified for stuff, and um, just grinding it out. Um, it's exciting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Here. Marcos. Congratulations, bro. But yeah, and it's it's exciting. Um, I was talking to Alan that it was like, oh, it's supposed to be a year course. Bet. And I did it in less. Banged it out in like a month, right? <laughs> uh, give, or, give or take. I was like, let, let me pull in all nighters sleep. That's a suggestion. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a good suggestion, bro. But yeah, what else? What about you, Alan? Uh, to be honest, bro, I have a couple of projects in mind. Uh, I think uh, the biggest one is the one we spoke about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still keeping that under wraps for for the time being. When the time comes, sure. like uh, I will definitely share that a little bit more openly. Um, yeah. uh, nothing bad, but uh, exciting, I guess you can say. It's business, business, business. Yes. Um, as far as that's uh, uh, other things, I guess you can say. Um, you know that I'm planning. It would probably be just right now focusing on work and investing, uh, predominantly more in the stock market and definitely bulking up on in my Roth IRA. Mm. Um, those are the, the things I'm more preoccupied being that we're at the halfway point of the year. It's pretty exciting. Right, Knowing the end of quarter two? Yeah, yeah. Basically, the end of quarter two, um, I think the, um, this also marks pretty much the, the time where probably Samsung is going to sooner or later announce their next uh, greatest and latest or latest and greatest new gadget. So I'm excited about that. I'm really looking forward to the Galaxy S25. Um, a lot of Tablets. other, yes, a lot of other companies are definitely also uh, following suit with certain announcements and plans on what they want to do. Um, updates on certain certain um brokerage accounts that i am really looking forward to and for the most part those are the things that i'm focusing on right now uh definitely uh trying to keep cool in this hot weather up up here in the northeast um also taking into account all the the hurricanes that are being announced 
something with the B, right? It's coming up. One with the B name. Uh, yes, yes. I don't know Bradley. the name. Probably. Yeah, I heard that yesterday was, um, or earlier today. I'm not sure when exactly, but it was. As if they're recording. Oh, yeah. Right. Over, excuse me, over uh, Jamaica and heading toward the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah. So my heart goes out to everyone there. Prayers, obviously. And um, definitely just. I, I'm pretty sure there's another one um, passing over Puerto Rico and then heading over to Florida like it usually happens, the right? So preset stuff for emergency. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely, That's definitely. Speaking of presidents, oh, good Lord, did you see Yo, the, the, drama. the craziness that was He the even debate. said it. He even said, it. I didn't do my best job out there. I, I, I acknowledge that. Bro, well, I mean, not that we get political here or very much, but yeah, that was uh, that was still, a it was a yeah, TV yeah, yeah. public it, broadcasting. It was a crazy showing. Yeah, no, it was a crazy showing as far as um, debate goes. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, all I can say is that America, we deserve better. <laughs> we deserve better than the two choices that are being presented. And obviously, people are going to have uh, their misgivings and their uh how can i put it uh their biases right so uh, teach their own uh mm -hmm. don't let this divide you um and your loved ones and your community but um yeah definitely i would say uh, america deserves better and hopefully up ahead in the future we we do get those uh better options uh, as of right now um there's no third party going on right now right the now? third party would be probably uh bobby kennedy yeah, yeah, RFK, RFK. Is he is he still in the running or was as an end? I think as an independent, yeah, he's the I guess the loudest or making the most noise. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about him. I think in certain uh, policies, I'm I'm with him, and there's other things that he he's down for that I'm not with him on, on political issues. So again, it, pick your poison. Obviously, you're gonna, not going to agree 100% with everything any, any one politician uh, is, is backing, you know, what they what they represent or stand for. So, again, uh, you know, do your homework, do your due diligence, check what their policies are, and, you know, I guess vote. Could it be saying vote with your conscience? No, right? Uh, I mean, at this point, no, because... I think that we don't have the best options for either or. I, I can tell you, I can probably try to be positive and say, pick the lesser of the two evils. And um, and again, our current president isn't all there at the moment. And I guess you can say it almost seems like el uh, elderly abuse when they have a person that's on, not man. all there yeah we have that we have that i think we do right <laughs> that's crazy did you find it oh i got it i got it do not come come on man come do on not come. man i'm gonna come, come on man come on man <laughs> See? <laughs> a little something for everyone <laughs> that's all you need and um yeah no that, it, it's crazy i mean other other in other news i can say we, uh we can definitely look at other current events like julian assange being uh free and yes. going home right so that that's uh for some that's the positive report? uh yes though the guy that was um being detained because he was, uh, I think he was the, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the the one that was on WikiLeaks, you know, sharing the information that uh, this other leakster, what's his name, that's in Russia at the moment, I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were in cahoots, and uh, yeah, that those are the things that are going on at the moment. Um, what what's another another current event thing that's happening? I think this year it's the year of uh, what's it called uh, a voting, right? Of uh, presidential elections. Uh, oh, yeah, right, yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> For people who didn't know, that's why yeah. I was like um, tilted. I I didn't even last like ten minutes watching the the, the debate. 
the debacle. I mean, the debate. Right, right. And um, um, change channel. Yeah, France. I, I think is going through it. I think they voted in a conservative, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Mexico is concerned, they have a. Oh yeah, was it confirmed with the yeah, president? The, yes, presidenta, if you will. Um, uh, her name is that Claudia. Like weird, oh, Claudia Sheinbaum. Claudia Sheinbaum. She's from the Morena Party, uh, Democratic Party, um, and. I believe she has, I think, more than fifty percent of the full backing of of the country. So I think she had like what, like fifty eight percent or fifty nine or something. Like I, I I'm not sure. I don't. It wasn't know the percentage. 60. That I know it was in the fifty eighth percentile. No, but she had she had the majority. So uh, unfortunately, over here in New York, for those that follow Mexican politics. Uh, they had a big issue. So apparently they had nine um, voting booths and they only had about 1,500 tickets so you can actually vote. And I think if not triple, quadruple, that amount of people actually showed up to vote. Like and, 4K? Yeah, bro. And only of the nine booths to vote, only four were working that day. So talk about manipulation <laughs> of voting right <laughs> so that was a big issue that that was going on and that that made the the news reels wasn't it also that every other candidate that was you know competing alongside her uh, this new presidenta um weren't they like assassinated i think it wasn't presidential uh candidates i think they were more uh governor of states that that it happened uh, in with, 2024 again um understanding that uh over in mexico there's a lot of narco type of situations going there that um for for certain states when you aren't a part of the organization uh and you are trying to better certain things and again i could be totally wrong Maybe they're they are from an actual uh, um, narco faction that is from a different faction, and you're not with the ones that are in power or trying to be in power. There's a lot of uh, it's a Game of Thrones. Yeah, there's a lot of corruption that goes along with that. But apparently, again, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't live there, but apparently, uh, the reason why Claudia Sheinbaum had such a big support was because of the fact that in in the six years that president amlo was in in power he basically did what i guess you can say the last four or five presidents of mexico didn't do so having a new airport being built having the um the streets or the interstates being um a little bit more accessible Having a train that will help with the uh, the, ec- uh, the economy for is it going to be like the southern states or products like the one that goes up already up and down? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the the situation is, but I know that for the train, the train Maya will have both a a public where you can actually take the train, and you can go around the whole south of Mexico and they have a industrial uh, yeah. train track where you are, you're able to move shipments of, of goods and services uh, around the southern uh, states where um, financially speaking it's it's very much needed to try to compete with the northern states so it's a lot more balanced and the money actually ends up in, in the people's hands and not just in in a few um and what they did over here they opened towns alongside the train tracks so if anything- right and businesses yes yes uh i think the the craziness or the 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 um, i guess the bigger issue here or the bigger solution that was trying to be trying to be met was that they're competing with the um, the panama canal right so instead of going all the way to panama and um since the Panama Canal apparently was was sold was 
was given to back to Panama, and then Panama apparently sold it to uh, to China. From what no way, I remember, really? When did they? What? So uh, I think I want to say last year, their the their permission was uh, w- basically relinquished because that's that was like oh, I think de- a debt trap kind of situation. Because no, no, no. I think what the U.S. wanted it to do was to give it to the country back because of uh, their a treaty or some of some sort. Yeah, for and like then, 90 years or something. Like that. Yeah, they would only be uh, held to that. Um, that certain time frame and then it would be given back to the country the country would then know what to do with it and apparently what they did with it was sell it or rent it out or I don't know what the logistics there are or the plan but it was given to China so China is in control of most if not all of the Panama Canal that's a big uh, kind of like a red flag yeah that's really dumb of of Panama and the US to, to go about it that way right well you know whatever that's, it, is it, is. it is what it is. At this moment, we can't really do anything. Um, so what Mexico has done, uh, not only proposed, but actually came uh, on, on doing was uh, building out the infrastructure of a train track that would basically do the same situation of logistics of moving certain things from east to west along the coastline or yeah. from coast to coast. And you don't have you can bypass going all the way to the Panama Canal, and you can do it through Mexico, which is a lot closer to the U.S. And grow and, out the market along the way, right? And then obviously grow out all the southern uh, states of Mexico that are impoverished. So, which is a good thing. Again, yes, sir. These are the things that are were are being done or had been done with uh, the six years that Ab- President Amlo was in there uh, as president. Um, so that that's what you can see as marking the difference between the other four or five presidents before him and probably even more compared to him. So, um, again, do I agree with everything he did or the certain policy or stances that he had? No. Uh, Do I think he's done uh, a net positive for the country? Yes. Again. And that's how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to be a full ride person because you're going to call him out. You have you to. Have to. You have to be transparent. You have to be fair. And um, you might like him as a person, but you got to call him out and, yo, you're dropping the ball here. Exactly. And I think it only time will tell what would happen, what will happen with um, uh, Claudia Sheinbaum and whoever ends up being the president of the United States. Now, one of the bigger things that you can see nowadays uh, or that you can see that's more palpable is the near, sh- near shoring that's happening in Mexico. What a lot mean, of the, like the, the companies oh, coming up? Yeah, a lot of the companies from the U.S., instead of going to China and having China build or manufacture things, uh, are being stopped, right? So the tariffs are being implemented. They're not oh, being... Yeah, the huge tariffs. Right, so like they're not being... 100%, right? For China? I, I don't remember the percentage of how much they're being charged. Because but, they were charged zero back then right, for a, for a long right. time. Yeah, so they were basically... They were making... Uh, they were quadruple 100% dip win. Yeah, they were they were winning and we were not winning. Out, out beating anyone in the market, basically, because exactly. they're, they're not getting charged. Right. And now that I, they're getting charged, they're like, oh, no. Yeah, so the, the, the big oopsie here was that in, in that communist country... They would, if you wanted to to set up shop, you had to share your secret sauce 50%. with them. Fifty percent. No, you had to share. Like Coca Cola would have to share their secret sauce with them. And right? look at Tesla. Tesla had to uh, same thing. Look what's going on with every them. company. Apple had to do the same thing. Everybody has to do. If you want to work or have something to do in China, you have to play ball with them. So now that the tariffs are in place, now that China is being a lot more. Um, I guess you can say a uh, playing hardball. Uh, Apple has been moving out and going to India and man, Vietnam. yeah, yeah, manufacturing Mexico, uh, right? So the nearshoring has to do with that. So a lot of the companies, instead of going pulling out of China and going somewhere different, they're setting up shop in Mexico. So and they found big mines, right, for the tech tech industry. So lithium has been found in northern Mexico, a vein of lithium, which is a, a good thing, yeah. right? Um, another thing that has been rehabilitated was the refinement of of, uh, of crude oil to gasoline, 
You Sorry. heard what happened over here in the weekend? I've been talking about crude oil. No, what happened, bro? The president, Mr. Biden over here, released over four, four million on a raw, ready, like no, no, in the reserve from the reserves already processed for the people to control the prices because he he knew like he, he released like what? Oh Wednesday? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes, yes. On uh, four mil over four oh, uh, four million plus, not five million. But over four million um, barrels, not gallons, barrels of the reserves. I'm like, what the heck? Which so, is, which yeah. sounds crazy, right? So I believe that it's the northeastern um, reserve. Know. That, from what I remember, it's a uh, northeastern uh, reserve. So basically, we're kind of tapped out, right? Mm -hmm. So the solution here would be that Mr. Biden or Mr. President Biden would stop playing to. Uh, to the his uh, his green new scam as uh, the the <laughs> former President Trump was saying his uh, green new scam where he would stop doing all this nonsense and start drilling and fracking again and having or re replenishing our our gas reserves or oil reserves and then also um, being able to. Um, uh, refine the crude oil so we can have gasoline at a, a reasonable price for for people that are in the states now a lot of people are like no no but you know uh, i think california is the best example right now where they wanted to eliminate all the gasoline cars right and only do electric so they would they had a, a law or they have a law in place where um you would get charged an extra tax for using gasoline cars so a lot of people moved over to electricity but or left the state <laughs> yeah or left the state but what happened is that for everyone that moved over to the electric cars um two things happened so uh as many people know california doesn't have the infrastructure like many other states don't have the infrastructure to actually charge up your cars uh to the full or to the max um and also in the same breath you know or the same time be able to turn on your AC and cool your home during the summer. In a heat. hot place. Right. So what's happening is that now that the government is seeing that a lot of people moved over to, to electric cars, EVs, the, the funny thing that's happening is that now they're not making enough money with the new tax that they implemented for people that use gasoline cars. So they're going to start charging people that have EV cars. So it's or, it was or a, bring up the electrical price either or no they you have a shut off they they you're not allowed to use electricity at a certain time over there for certain places so it was redundant and now they're kind of you know kicking themselves in the ass where it's like they they made it really difficult for them to even own an electrical car <laughs> so it's like what next next thing you know it's gonna have like bicycle lanes in <laughs> the interstate bro because that it makes no sense for people to have either or at this point now um gas prices are high up there always, yeah right? everywhere i think they were charging i don't know if it was like like nine dollars ten dollars per gallon or something like that or i might be bugging but the point is that there's it, it's really bad below five that I can guarantee you. yeah it's it's really crazy so again that that's the litmus test right everyone so if you live in another part of the u.s uh, for the most part you're you're feeling the the prices right you're feeling the inflation on everything every day you know staples and goods that you buy i mean uh, i think the um an article came out i'm not sure if it was uh new york times or something like that or the wall street journal or forbes i don't know who it was they were in one of their articles they were saying that uh fast food is is for rich people right now or it's uh it, it, yeah 20 30 bucks for a burger right it, it's a luxury food now fast food is a luxury food for people now um unfortunately because prices are, have been out of control I, I think i put that in one of the notes that target uh well uh, mcdonald's and i forgot what other company made it to lower the prices ju just because they're like they're noting how expensive it is i think i shared it with you yeah i think you did they did a collab so a lot of fast food places have been have been really abusing uh the customer and, and it's due to the fact of the the what's it called the um, inflation right so 
the the problem here is that they always want to pass on the the taxes onto the customer so they have maximum profits but a lot of the clients are not trying to pay that so a, a lot of people are opting to going to the budget places right so maybe you're the type of person that would go and shop at like a, a Trader Joe's or a Whole Foods, right? Getting like really expensive ingredients. Well, a yeah. lot of these people are now moving over to going to Target or even Walmart uh, just so they can have a cheaper alternative. So that way they can save money. Okay. And so it's Target, Aldi's and McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. So McDonald's is bringing back a a five dollar combo special, and same thing with Wendy's, and I believe same thing with um, I want to say Burger King if I'm not mistaken. But the oh, and and speaking of McDonald's, mm-hmm. uh, I saw and I shared a video with you guys on IG. Um, so McDonald's is doing a collab uh, this coming week, I think, or in a couple of days. Where they're gonna have the uh, JJK, the Jujutsu Kaisen sauces. Huh? Oh yeah. no! Oh no! They, yeah. they, they, know, the, they know their people. The black garlic sauce, or something, or something like that, right? And mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm excited. I want to see what's going on with that. Let's. Hopefully, it's good. Um, what else? Uh, I I want to say, I think Seven Eleven is trying to introduce a few Japanese options that that they have um, in 7-Elevens in Japan and try to, you know, kind of move some of that type of um, uh, items over to the U.S. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not quite sure. They, they, they've they been really good at keeping it under wraps so they don't, you know, fumble the bag. Other than that, okay. bro, um, yeah, so gasoline has been bad. Uh, uh, home food stables have been bad. Excuse me. Uh, a lot of people have been opting to cook at home more often now because apparently food is uh, or fast food is a luxury item or a luxury food at this point in time for people that uh, thought that you can get go to McDonald's and get your dollar menu. That's no no longer a thing. And people are really, uh, you know, really, really taken aback by that mm-hmm. situation. Um, other than that, bro, like th- those are the type of things that are that are going on, right? <laughs> that probably concern most people. Um, for what's it called for for the foreseeable future, I think. Oh, that, that's another thing I, I'm remembering. For those that are wanting to go to Europe at some point next year, I think it's next year. They're going to start asking you to apply for a, a visa. You won't be able like to. Like a tourist visa? Yeah, you won't be able to enter the the EU, the the Europe, without a visa anymore. You're going to have to apply for a visa. And I think it has to do to the fact that um, U.S. has been on a on a spiral downward on on How many downward? things. I, I don't know what what it is exactly. What do you mean, what do you mean by that? Oh, in in the sense, like I don't know if if you remember, uh, maybe a couple of months ago in Japan, when they when a lot of U.S. tourists started going over there, they've been they were acting a fool, and I don't know yeah. if that has to do anything to do with uh, the European thing, um, but it, it might be one of many factors uh, that that's why they're doing the the visa. Now it could also be new regulations from the eu where they they want to impose that type of thing so they can charge some sort of tax on them because they kind of need money that's a um, thing yeah. uh, again i don't know the the actual thing and again uh, it would probably be something that people would need to look into whether it's a good thing or a bad thing um, I, my my point of view, my perspective, and my suggestion. Not that again, I'm not an expert. Please don't take this as any type of financial advice or anything other than just me speaking my mind right now. Um, if you are in any way, shape, or form able, capable of getting a second citizenship, 
somewhere, um, whether it be from the Caribbean or from European descent, or in our case, uh, Mexican descent of having double citizenship, definitely be proactive and get it. Uh, I got as you the source. Yes, go keep, ahead. You no, know, keep going, keep going. I'm gonna take a screen share. Oh, yeah. So um, that would probably be my my suggestion. Uh, just you know, as a friendly, you know, go where you're being treated best, or go where you're treated best as as a uh, as a quote from uh, the nomad capitalist um, would say, "Go where you're treated best." That's something I I would take to heart, and. Um, yeah, just look into those type of things right now. Um, currency wise, I, I I'm very I'm very into uh, uh, I share the same sentiment as 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 Brent Johnson explains why the economy is the way it is right now. I'm very much um, uh, I guess you can say um, aligned with what he's saying, just because he has the 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 receipts to prove it. Um, Though that's something I would probably also suggest people look into Brent Johnson and the milkshake, the uh, dollar milkshake theory. That's probably what I would suggest people to look into at the moment. Just so you can get yourself acquainted and your bearings onto to the financial beat of what's going on in the world. Hashtag not not uh, definitely not sponsored. Financial yeah. advice. This is just and like not financial follow. advice. Yes, 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 but yes. It, I, I like, I like um, letting him cook. Letting him cook because it makes his cooking sense over here for listeners. Yes. Okay, um, I got the sauce. I got the sauce. Okay, Ready? go ahead, go ahead. As of November 2023, the European Union, EU, is planning to introduce the European Travel Information and Authorization System, ETIAS, in mid 2025 to improve border security, ETIAS will be required for all passport holders from around 60 countries who currently travel to most European destinations without a visa, including U.S. Pa- including US passport holders. ETIS is an electronic code linked to your passport that's valid for three years or until um or until your passport expires whichever comes first it allows holders to stay in partis- in participating european countries for up to 90 days with within a 180 day period however travel travelers will still need to submit to facial and fingerprint scans when they arrive in europe Yes. So they're saying it's for security stuff since 2023. We already know what happened in 2022 and all those things. And what's going on right now, like this right. past weekend. Um, I don't know if you heard your listeners and Alan, that all European American bases were put up in high, put up in high security. High alert. Yeah, like uh, Code Charlie or something like that, which is like the third highest. They had to like- Charlie Brown? Up. Yes. I think it's in Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. I think. Don't don't quote me on that. But they were in, in Code Charlie, which means it's like the third highest level for the American military bases to be, you know, uh, constant communications uh, with their with the European uh, partners, the NATO teams, all those things um, with whatever's going on. I don't know what happened, so you know, check check whatever you think may may be interested in your area, dear listeners. Okay, that's definitely good go to know. The, with the next segment, with that, Alan, with that note. Hell yeah, bro! What, what would be the next note here besides um the the notes? The, our receipts, our conversation notes that we have. The warning may include laughter, debates, and critical thinking. What is your f- at your own peril? Oh, I was gonna say, uh, what is your favorite chicken parmesan spot? <laughs> okay, so so with that. Alan, to do, to you, dear listeners, uh, we have uh, a list of of our receipts of chats, the things that I found interesting, and uh, I want to say, what do you mean by that? To to you, Alan, and then to you, the listener, that you would like to listen, hear this, you know, at a later time, I'll post maybe some of the maybe 
you know this is just a partial thing between us but i'm sharing it to you dear listeners so with from 1 to 30 1 to 32 pick a number whichever calls your attention and i heard chicken so you're talking about the chicken farm uh yeah no i was gonna read off all 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 of them and then just pick a few to go Go over but um all right so number two was uh what is your favorite chicken parmesan spot the third is they said all planes are on ground stop not air stop number four new u.s speaker of the house and then dot 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 drama question mark uh number five ai you uh vtuber question mark why is this so entertaining question mark uh six uh meme stock roaring kitty on the rise dumb money movie on netflix later youtube um Number seven, a woman denied top secret security clearance. Why? Uh, number eight, personnel, oh, personal life story on geese and chickens. Okay. Um, number nine, buying a house in the U.S. today triggered me. Uh, number 10, the FTC of the U.S. is banning non-completes or non-competes. Excuse me. This is uh, good or bad. Number 11, soda story time misty eyed sierra mist over this legal case uh number 12 u.s marines grant make a wish wishes for the children number 13 a gofundme for a famous voice actor with cancer jesse from pokemon on uh, number 14 japan's lost decade question mark uh our sh- uh, number 15 our shadow meme review or straight facts question mark uh number 16 Visa credit card company poised to make major changes. Number 17, breaking the mold. Number 18, uh, inflation hits McDonald's, IHOP, and Applebee's, targets new thing, and Aldi cuts prices, retail news, roundup. Number 19, what's the buzz with all these top CEOs saying about the economy? Uh, number 20, what's your what's your baby, truck? Uh, four-cylinder showdown. Um... Number 21, supersized meat creator dead at 53. Number 22, Amazon workers can't get time off. Number 23, when gaming companies paint themselves into a memorable corner. Uh, Number 24, running duos, graphic cards, duos. That is, do you miss them? Question mark. Number 25, ISP nutrition guide label incoming. Question mark. Uh, number 26, Skyborg AI pilot program. It's about building trust. San Diego Shield AI standing in business alongside DARPA. Standing on business. Oh, standing in. in uh, oh, said it's in, on. I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Standing on business alongside DARPA. <laughs> um, number 27, every anime studio explained in. Number 28, yeah. yes. Number 28, Tesla honeymoon period has ended kicked off by the ccp uh number we 20 talking about that yes we were number 29 men are going raw dog on plane question mark uh number 30 u.s discovers another rare mineral reservoir inland number 31 u.s marines drop to haiti to clear out the american embassy number 32 food groups debate all right those are all 32 um what do you mean by that uh on the list so i don't know is there anything here that that you wanted to to kind of like go through uh specifically Yes. Let's see. For me, I have. What tickles uh, your fancy, sir? They're just they're just fancy stuff. But personally, for me, that we were talking about is the the food groups, personally. Okay. Food groups. Ready. Brace yourself. Yes. Do you see it? Mm. No. Did you click on it? Yes. It's a YouTube video, right? 
What do you think? I don't know. I'm trying to listen to it, but it blasts the noise. Like, I got to turn down the volume on this. All right. Ready? One more time. Soup sandwich from Wellington. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know what the point to the video is. Like, what is he trying to categorize? What happened? I, like, I don't see the point to him of to the video. Like, I don't know what he's trying to categorize or why is he trying to categorize uh, ethnic food? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Yeah, like, check the comments. It says, I was, uh, uh, it's, uh whoever said curry is a sandwich has never actually had curry before. I'm like, agreed. Right. Right. Because um, if somebody prompted his opinion about food groups, right? And not nutrition, just categorization, organizing food groups. Yeah, I, I think that he's doing himself a disservice by trying to categorize, categorize them into three, three uh, categories where it, like, especially with ethnic group, uh, ethnic food, um, that, that seems a little weird to me. Um, where where um every country has their has the way their way of um not only presenting food or making food but presenting food and i don't think just categorizing the, them is yeah those three categories are so limiting that it makes no sense and it sounds silly when he says that curry is a what he said a sandwich a soup or a soup no i thought he said a sandwich no well point being is that again Seems Somebody silly. else said it's a sandwich. No, and he said it's a soup because it's chaotic items mixed into uh, a, a single product mixing chaotically into a, a medium. May that be a liquid, um, a, like a like a, mo a sauce, um, and all those things. It's or rice. Rice is rice grain mixed in chaotically boiled and all those things properly, right? Seasoned, and it's chaotically set up versus a, a sandwich. Uh, a sandwich. What's a sandwich? Two outer shells. A bread layered up and down with whatever mix of items that you want. The lasagna would be a uh, sandwich. Again, you? that that makes no sense. Pasta is something that you would bake, in, or like a lasagna would some would be something baked in into uh, in an oven, layers. and it's layers, right? so it wouldn't be considered a sandwich. Same thing with a wrap. What, or, what, would or you, a pizza. what do you call it? Yeah, what do you call a taco? That's not a sandwich. He would say a sandwich, knowing it. The, 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 yeah, oh, it's a again, hot dog. Yeah. Uh, Again, I think he's limiting himself yeah. to a detriment. He's not like saying the nutritional qualities. He's just no, no, no. Of course not. But again, even, even, even that's such a uh, very limiting. Simple. It's too simple. Personally. Yeah, he's oversimplifying to the point where it makes no sense. I think, okay. in my yeah. humble opinion, that's for me. What would you pick? What would be your next? Which one would you? Pick? Um, let's see. Let's see. Something that I found interesting. Let's see, where is it? I saw it earlier. Anything? Can you just share a screen? That way I can collaborate and stand for your reasoning on it, if you will. Yeah, let me let me let me check. Give me a sec. Uh where's my screen sharing? Share screen. Yes. And I wanna go over down here too. My question was mine too loud when um Oh, got it. Yep. All right. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, I don't remember. Was it you or was it me that, sh that shared the Japan's lost decade? You did. Was it me? Yeah. It's a long video too, but the yeah. super highlights is that they're, after World War II, they were, they were growing. But in the 80s, something happened. <laughs> and I feel like we're going through that now, personally. I feel like it resonates right now with us, with the pandemic. Oh, yeah. It was a cold fusion uh, video. Yes, sir. 
Iya, yeah, iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I So the reason I I shared the video is because it, it correlated really nicely with the um, the basic premise of of the of the dollar mi- milkshake uh, theory where because the because Japan put itself in that situation where they printed way more money than they actually had as far as like value to to um, to place on that money um the the money kind of tanked right so yeah. that's at one point um the the castle in in Tokyo the i guess you could say that historic uh castle was valued uh, more than I, i believe the the i don't know if they said it was valued more than the whole state of California or whatever or or Los A- the city of Los Angeles or something like that. They so, owned uh, the, the New York City place. Uh, yeah, the Rockefeller Square Center. Square Garden, yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well. Right, so they they started purchasing big purchases um, and they, then they defaulted when their money kind of crashed, when their economy tanked. So it, that ripple effect or that the aftermath is something that they're still uh, feeling now, like even 2024. Um, they're still feeling feeling the after effect of their, that crash, which um, I, I would say that a lot of people. Uh, th- this is the reason why a lot of Japanese people are savers because they don't know when something like that will happen again, and it, it's I guess you could say the Japanese government that wants them to spend more money. I think what they've done right now is uh, they they they. started moving up or, or initiating their interest rates right they're moving up interest rates to like one percent or almost one percent um and and a lot of people are still are saving or holding on to their money they don't want to they're not big spenders because they think or they they have that in their psyche and their mind that they grew up with it yeah exactly so a lot of people are still very iffy uh, uh on are, spending what instead generation of are the 80s people um I don't know what I think they're uh, some X? of them are maybe X X uh, some are X some are millennials I guess to a certain degree yeah 80 the whole thing that they were saying it happened in 84 right the whole issue that they defaulted so at least they had four years of understanding but that was the climax if you the less the, the climax or the peak and then everything went down 85 86 must have been bad those in that decade Right, you know. Personally, I think again, I highly strongly suggest people look into Brett Johnson's uh dollar milkshake theory because he breaks down a lot of this information where he he explains about um M1 and M2 uh which is like the the I w- I would I would probably say um the the scales or how money is moved um between uh, or like i guess you could call them the receipts of money it, it, on a macro and micro level uh, and how um how there's another thing called euro dollar uh, the euro dollar system where it's money dollar money or dollars that are being created outside the US and it's been created by Uh, U.S. sanctioned international banks for the borrowing of dollars and buying uh, goods and services in dollars outside the U.S. Right. Mm-hmm. So basically, as an example, if say say uh, Costa Rica wanted to buy something from uh, from a different country like a France, right? As an example, Costa Rica would go to the bank and. ask for ask to borrow in dollars a certain or to get some sort of like a a a bank loan in dollars so they can buy something in france in dollars so france that french company sells that good or service to that costa rican uh company or person in um and receives the dollars now they have the dollars and they're yes. able to buy 
uh, something else from a, from like say Spain, uh, and they would buy it in in dollars. Yeah. So those that's what you would call euro dollars, right? So everybody around the world buys and sells and asks for loans in euro dollars. So if like as an example, if all the countries that want to get off the dollar suddenly default so they don't want to use the dollar anymore this would be very detrimental to their way of living because they wouldn't default on the US per se they would default on themselves because they owe each other the dollars they wouldn't they're not owing the dollars to the US right so it's like that 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 very reason is the reason why people don't want to default on each other because uh, Costa Rica owes that money to France and France owes that money to Spain and vice versa so that's the reason why if I sink we all sink right we all sink we, we, the we only people that them. yeah the only people that wouldn't sink um, at, at at the jump would be only the US so everyone would fall before the US would fall because it they don't have any skin in the game in that sense the loan was made to a certain company or 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 person in another country and they're buying to another country not necessarily the US the only thing that is being exchanged there is dollars not necessarily American dollars but the euro dollar system so that's why the BRICS company or the BRICS countries are want to get off the dollar but because the dollar is so um, what's it called it is the, the infrastructure is made for the dollar trying to buy and sell goods that with something other or currency that's not dollars it's nearly impossible if not impossible because no one wants to use the uh, what's it called no one wants whatever currency uh, they have in their country they want to use dollars because everybody knows that the dollar is the the, the reserve currency so it makes more sense to you to use it because the system is is created in order for you to interact and interchange things with dollars. It, the infrastructure is made for it. So trying yes. to get off of it is, is nearly impossible. At some like point, right now, with uh, wasn't like India, like no, which one's the leader? Brazil, right? Brazil. They were saying like, no, Brazil no, was inviting in, a bunch of them in South America. So yeah, so India, I think Brazil. What's uh, R? Russia. Russia. China. China, I think. I think South What's Africa. F? South Africa. Okay. Right? Uh, are are the um the countries that are trying to the trying to buy and sell um with with, with um their their BRICS money, their BRICS coin. Local currency. They don't even have a, a, a BRICS coin. They have their own local currency. So so they'll use rubles and uh dinars or whatever uh local currency they have but once they have it in that currency no one else wants that currency because they don't they they can't peg it to anything so essentially the value could fluctuate so it makes it very um uh, uh not not smart to to buy or sell with a currency that's not the dollar at the moment and they haven't really made a system and they've been the BRICS countries isn't a new thing they've been going at it for about 20 years or so from what I could tell uh, since the um, 2000s yeah early 2000s and they've been on about getting off the dollar system but they haven't been able to to make much headway they can trade amongst themselves in, in their local currency but once you pay and buy or pay or buy um uh, whatever good or service you want in that local currency, uh, you you end up with that currency, but you can't really do much with it because it's not dollars. At that point, it's a paperweight. Yeah, it's like you you can only do that type of buying and selling with the com- with the country that you already did the buying and selling with. So it, it's kind of redundant mm-hmm. uh, in that sense. So it, it's it, it's interesting and, and Japan. Um, right now, going back to Japan, um, mm-hmm. right now their their yen is really, really not doing so good, right? So what's the price right now? Right last now, last time it was one sixty off the top of my head. Today, I believe it. We woke up with a one sixty one yen to the dollar. Yo, yeah. When yeah, 
is there going to be a point that they default? So they have to, from what I could uh, gather, the information I could gather from from uh, Brent Johnson again. Um, uh, he was saying that they have two two scenarios, right? They either save the currency or they save their banking system. Those are the two options they have. So it, it seems to him that Japan would much rather save the banking system over their currency. What so? What do they mean by that? What what that mean? What that means is that their money would turn to worthless nothing. The bank like system would, yeah. So the banking system will still be there like as as far as their infrastructure would be there but then they would have to introduce a new currency what's the system currently there like, so the so the yen would be obsolete so the yen would default right so they would lose their currency right so yes. they would have to start from from scratch so they they basically go bankrupt is what i'm saying yeah so for their example, money um, their money so, would uh, would be nothing like uh, uh what is it like a couple of countries in india uh they're defaulting right now badly um haiti i think defaulted um other like a bunch of countries are defaulting but yeah i i, I don't know i'm not sure what who what countries have defaulted right now currently but i do know that mexico i think defaulted two or three times already on their currency like the banking system is there they 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 held on to the banking system, but they defaulted on their on their currency. Recently, they defaulted. I think the last time that it happened was I think early '80s, if I'm not mistaken, or '70s. Oh, yeah. I, know, I know the '70s one. Like the I have 70s. stories from, okay. from middle yeah. school. Yep. Um, and then I know the other one in the '80s because my dad was around when he when that happened. Like nobody wants it. Like the first time it was a joke, and then that happened. The second time it's like. I think it was before the big earthquake because my dad uses that as a reference when he was okay. in the mil- military service. Yeah, that um, they had to do a lot of uh, community service to help the people in you know, like setting up rules and make rules and with military, you know, not pol- like policing, okay. but to help the people. And that's what he remembers when he was doing his service. That was his demarcation, the 80s and the 70s when he was a little kid. That his grandpa used to say like, why? Stay with the piss. Why are people going, you know, switching, dipping, dipping, dipping from Mexican peso? And then that happened. And like his grandpa said, oh, I didn't see that coming. And then the earthquake. The earthquake happened. And the fire was nation big, attack. Yeah, it, basically the Fuego Nation just said fire. Fuego. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, the, that that's basically what's going on right now. And again, Personally, uh, there's another story that I, I think I shared with you guys. So uh, I think this week, if not in a couple of days, um, they're going to start removing certain uh, um, uh, what's it called bills from f- out of circulation in Japan and introducing new ones. Yeah. So paper currency, they're they're removing a certain certain uh, paper notes and yeah. um, putting new paper notes in, in its place. So. Okay. Um, I, I, it was uh, only a Japan video with John Dobb and yes, and uh, I was actually reaching out to to Kenichi. Hopefully, he heard my message. Where I'm like, yo, dude, let me know how much money I have to pay you so you can hold on to a couple of those bills that are gonna be, you know, erased from history or you know, taken out of circulation, and uh, I'll pay you the the equivalent of what it is and um, hold it on, hold on to them for me so I can I, I can just you know. When I go to Japan, you can pass them to me and I can have them as like, you know, um, mementos or, you know, um, some sort of like a part of the history, you know, of Japanese currency. I think that would be pretty dope. Um, so, yeah, that, that's basically what 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 uh, what's happening now as far as currency goes in JP. Uh, Mexico right now is about 18 and some change to the dollar. Um I don't know how the Canadian dollar is doing, but uh, I mean, uh, I've I've heard stories right now that's maybe not currency related, but uh, I hear that a lot of Canadians are trying to leave Canada. Uh-huh. Yeah, for I, I'm pretty sure like political reasons as well. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, again, the world is changing uh, very much so. 
uh, I hear that uh, Bukele down in uh, El Salvador is doing a, a really good, great job. Uh, it went from the number one, you know, violent country in the world to now being super safe because he put a, a, all the um, gangsters in, in jail. And uh, he's he's uh, promoting or he, he's basically trying to have people come and he's giving out citizenships to people that are willing to live in El Salvador uh, who are super qualified, right? Engineers, doctors. Uh, he wants, yeah. Like STEM, STEM people, you know, people yeah. that, that work in STEM. And he's giving them uh, uh, what's it called a free citizenship, right? If they if yeah, if they move over, con- contribute, yeah, right. And I think the latest company that went over to uh, set up HQ or uh, 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 some sort of uh, building is, if I'm not mistaken, Google. I think no way. Or or yeah, either Google or, or for, uh, don't you dare say Facebook. Or- <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's Google from from what I remember. And uh, yeah, so. He's trying to push forward. Again, he's he's I think one of the only countries that have that has a part of their GDP in Bitcoin. Um, is that is that smart? It's diversified. Don't get me that, wrong. I mean, that's what people would consider it. Other people would consider it not very smart as a move. Again, uh, they I guess they have a better understanding or grasp of their economy so i wouldn't it's their money <laughs> yeah i wouldn't I, I wouldn't even begin to tell you what what's going on there but um i mean if he's pushing forward in in that sense i don't see like i guess to a certain extent he's trying to get off of or he's being cautious and trying to um be diversified so he doesn't he isn't him and his country isn't caught in a in a bad situation where they have a a, a currency crunch where they have to default uh, on their currency or they have to forsake their banking system. So I think in, in that sense, he's playing it they smart. They have to hire experts like the, the STEM. Well, I mean, uh, for economy, I think that's a whole different beast. They would have to bring in their 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 CPAs and what other financial advisors to, to see what would be the best course of action for that country. Well, the thing, well, the thing is like, he knows he can't compete. He said it before in interviews, he, he knows he can't compete with other countries where, you know, um, there's a limitation on what the country has to offer as far as like natural resources and, you know, Real estate. yeah. And stuff like that. But he also knows that, um, the potential is there, you know, you know, five years, 10 years down the road, what, El Salvador can potentially be on the world stage so he's like um, yeah we're, we're starting from the, the ground up and the first thing that he wanted to do is make a country safe so yeah so he there could be flourishing of many so, uh, so potentials of things so he's gonna need a lot of STEM economists yeah. Yeah. people that could assist him in the government exactly okay, okay. so no, I got I got one yeah go ahead that one. okay so with that one i would say i want um number seven okay let's see let me put it on the screen brace your ear your audio boom brace yourself okay. a woman got denied secret secret top level security plans why you say Let's why know. let me know
What hmm. do you think? Uh, I think personally, like yeah, as a as an individual, I would say that. Yeah, I I want to say it's nothing burger, but at the same time, um, I think we've we've seen uh examples right from other uh, other other people where I don't know if it was uh, a politician or a the president of a university that was basically um going out without him knowing right he was lied to to a certain extent where his girlfriend uh was a chinese spy for the ccp when was i think it was last year if i'm not mistaken that that came out and into the public where it, it was found out that this this uh his girlfriend and i believe it started uh off as her being a quote unquote student right Okay. Uh, of his in, in in the university and then she started you know striking up a conversation with him and basically manipulating him yeah ma- manipulated him to to the extent where he really thought he had it like that and uh they you know that was his girlfriend and uh it came out to to light that you know she was a chinese spy check the comment check the comment it says um Secu- security clearance are not meant to be fair. They're su- uh, they are meant to be one hundred percent reliable. Well, um, I'm sure she's no risk, but uh, I don't think the government wants to take that chance. Yeah, but the measures that are in place are not are meant to help. Um, oh, are meant for protecting something greater than her career. Yeah, I think people in the government's going to pick and choose, especially when it comes to like, especially now where North Korea just had a nice little uh, get together with um, what's it called? With yeah, Vladimir, yeah, top, Vla- top Vladimir top Putin. I think that kind of blows her situation out the water where it's like, what's the chances of you actually being a spy? Um, maybe it's super low, but just because you are. That kind of puts damper on your whole situation. She's, she's a vulnerability. Right. Right. And even though she's straight up about it, it's like, I mean, listen, you, at, at this point in time, you're looked at as a uh, security, uh, what's it called? Liability. Liability. Yeah. So a uh, security risk where they're not going to take a chance. So maybe it'll there'll be a time where you know things will blow over maybe uh when a new president is installed or voted in um we'll see uh there might be a change in that situation maybe she'll appeal for for help uh when that time comes so i don't know it, it, it's it sucks but at the same time it's like i, I don't think the u.s government is going to want to take chances that's all i can say take a chance take a chance take a chance <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> what other one? What other, what other one? Um, let's see. Let me check real quick. Mm. Pick a number. Any number. I mean would be good here uh breaking the mold inflation hits mcdonald's the buzz all the ceo saying economy super size oh yeah let's do the super size me the 21 21 copy okay sharing the screen
bro. Yeah. I mean, he proved the point that he could survive off the dollar menu, but now that dollar menu also is is dead. You know what I mean? Definitely, bro. Uh, what else? Well, you already know that people are gonna uh gonna want to commentate about different stuff. Personally, for me, oh, I want I want to hear your opinion about the visa. Okay. You want to play it real quick? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. From Visa, I mean, Americans would carry So, so basically, Visa is going to be issuing an app, if you will, and you can assign like your debit card, your credit card, how much you, if it's from different company, different uh, banks, you can issue, issue um, certain charges, charge splitting, if you will. Right. So I think what they're explaining is more of the, the situation of security, right? So yes. they're, they're kind of following suit of what Apple technology has already introduced when they were working alongside with um, Morgan Stanley, I believe he said, yes. um, or was it? Uh, yeah, I think it was Morgan Stanley, or if it was um, uh, Goldman Sachs. I'm sorry, Golden Goldman Sachs. So they they basically came out with the technology of having just your name, no numbers, no uh, three digit, four digit security code on the back of your card. So everything was already like, I guess you can say in, in the cloud or on app in order for you to have that level of security, which no other uh, card company really has. Um, and I think that that would give a lot of customers or clients peace of mind, knowing that their information won't be out in the open where I believe the, the Apple credit card would generate a one-time use, you know, alternate code or number um, so you can use it that would be linked to your card. So uh, you essentially have that that security, that level of security. Um, so you don't have, uh, you know, your card being, um, the card information being stolen. And uh, Visa stepping uh, forward with using one card. So like say you have three different credit cards that are all Visa cards. So instead of you having those three physical cards, you have it all in one card and then you just select and choose with which card you, you want to pay. How that's gonna work with credit card issuers, as far as like bank issuers more, more than anything else, I don't know. Uh, I don't think he really explained that part. So like say, uh, as an example, Chase has the, the freedom card sapphire freedom the yes the freedom Drop flex ink. the ink the 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 freedom the sapphire the sapphire preferred the sapphire I feel reserve like chase provides a lot more variety though i don't know why even my little experience with chase versus other companies right so this this um having more than one option is a good thing right for people that want to have tier premium system. yeah the tier system and where you have premium type of cards compared to not so premium type of cards where you get perks and whatnot and i think uh moving forward visa will probably um it, thinking about visa as a technology company it probably makes more sense right now uh same thing with mastercard and american express they're more of a technology company than uh really a, a credit card oh, issuer credit card provider yeah um because they're coming out with all these new type of uh, you know uh uh i guess you can call them options for banking or 
uh, charging on cards where it might it might be that in in a couple of years uh they're going to move away from or or they'll figure out a different way to give you perks and points and whatnot um so that you can actually use the card properly in in the sense of like you're able to rack up miles or points for you to use it or incentives right because no one's going to want a card if there's no real incentives and the reason why the incentives are there is for people to benefit from them in the sense that if you're good with with credit cards you'll be able to game the system but if you are horrible with credit cards the credit card company is going to make bank off of you because they're charging you an interest rate because you're not paying uh, your credit card fully yes so that's that's the reason why credit cards are so are are being pushed onto clients or customers because they're they're hoping that you don't pay your card on time and you uh, you pay the the penalty fees on credit cards so this is the reason why things like that happen uh, and again yeah. it, it, i don't know how they're they're gonna ev- evolve it and, and figure those the nitty-gritty of that it's an evolving but, thing yeah yeah but i think i think uh, security wise i think it's great uh the other aspects with the credit card i don't know if that's a good thing for the banks uh or the customers or in the sense of getting perks and, and points and stuff like that and i think overall the person the people that are winning are probably going to be the clients on the security level and yeah. the credit card issuer as far as like american express mastercard and chase yes. in this case more than anyone visa because they're the one that are pushing for this type of technology so i think those are going to be the two winners at first i don't know how they're going to you know maneuver themselves in order for them to uh continue perhaps with perks and points and miles and whatnot so that, that's still up in the air at least for me from what i can gather uh from the video what about you uh, it's, it, they're issuing it. I, if i don't i don't have i don't have my wallet with me at hand it's in my, my backpack um okay. but um i think i have a visa um but in, in any ways like if they're going to be rolling this out it's not going to be right away and like, again they said that uh, the United States is, in- is infamous of doing this, but again, um, some Asian countries. My guess, probably Singapore, or South Korea, or Japan, even, is probably doing this because um, it's just easier for them to issue it over there. But it's an American company. It just it irks me in a way that why don't why don't they do it in some states here first? Slowly deploy. I'm not telling them how to do their job. Uh, it's just that I'm not a satisfied customer <laughs> and that's how and I'm not an angry against them I just want to keep them on point as a, as a potential co- to keep me with them like you said keep me a happy buyer or, or user of their product you gotta even promote that they're doing it in country to show that what's going on like what's going on in here this is what we're doing this is the progress if this is lacking this is strong this is weak what attracts me as a customer or even if it's a credit issuer what the job they're doing not showing the secret recipe i understand right but um what they're doing in my backyard in in my country to incentivize me to stay with them to not leave them to want even to hop on to their services you know what i mean in that sense economically speaking i'm not an expert but what can they market to me what are these pit abc always be selling okay dear listeners they are not some they're doing marketing campaigns but they're not showing what they're doing in in country they're saying it worked in asia they're saying uh historically they're not the fastest america is not the fastest in it pro, um deploying these services that's okay now try to try to mix it up what are the limitations promote that who's limiting you Who's hurting you? You know what I mean? Okay. That's my pet beef. A, the, my mindset right now is A, B, C. Always be selling. Okay. Even I knowing that um, selling is spelled with an S. Sounds better with the C. Mm-hmm. What do you like? 
financially speaking, they have their their guys, their big end uh, financial people in the back end. They have their their um, CPAs, all those things in the back end. Okay, cool. What can you do to a customer that's going to keep them interested in you? Because nowadays right. they got to stay in <clears throat> in that social media. <clears throat> Sorry, I just need to stay hydrated over here. Do you think you can cover cover me in the meantime? What do you think? Al? Yeah, well, again, the way I was uh, explaining it earlier, I think technology wise, it's a good thing for Visa in particular, right? Because they have way more control of um, not being being in that situation where they have to go look for the person that stole your credit card information and bought XYZ online or in person. And uh, they have to now, you know, they have to deal with the payment issue, right? Um, the so, refunds. Right, exactly. Or they, they're not out of, like, they don't see themselves in the situation where they have to pay out money, right? Because... Uh, it, it seems to me like, say you someone stole your credit card information and they started making purchases, right? Um, they can go to the vendor and say, "Well, cancel," right? And if the vendor, if they catch the, uh, the vendor at a at a at the right time, they'll be able to cancel the items, and you know, nothing n- nothing bad will happen, right? Um, but if they catch the, the 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 situation late in into the purchase now they have to kind of be like oh so you know we you have to refund us the money because that was a stolen credit card information and then the other person will be the vendor would be like nah we can't do that because we just sent the stuff out right so how how you know how are we going to be able to resolve this right Mm -hmm. and you know they'll be out of luck in the sense of like they're going to have to you know pay up for for the the loss i guess you can say so I think that's that's the way they would have. They're looking at it, right? They're trying to lose less money, and the solution here is introducing technology where they're the likelihood of you getting your credit card information stolen is not is very low. It's not happening because you don't even have a card number on your card on your physical card. It just says your name. That's it. Which again <sighs> might be, might benefit them quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's. Well, I feel like you you can close it there. They're looking out for themselves, and now they're gonna make it easier for us. It's gonna be a learning curve, man. It's gonna be a learning curve for us to entrust us on all that. Maybe they're gonna do some promotion, but I'm excited at the end of the day. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a good, it's a good thing. Let's see. Uh, what's another one? Uh, is it your turn or my turn? Go ahead, bro. I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm, I was going to tell you, bro, like, maybe this is the last one. Probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yes. So they're gamifying and making an economy inside. Right. Basically to get your time off. And my guess, it's probably part of the company itself that's gamifying it so that people don't don't exploit it. My my guess. Versus me, like I accumulate a certain amount of hours at my job uh, for paid time off. I ask for it and I get it issued after I work a certain amount of time. Uh, 
that's the usual way but now with them they have to slot it in have set it up as a volunteer and you have a certain amount of time and it doesn't roll over so they have a time period to hold into that within that year or yeah during that year so that they don't lose it but they have to slot it in and those slots are always being taken by who bots right right <sighs> big company drama man big company drama i i just uh, yeah I mean, that, that that's gonna be uh something that we're gonna we're gonna see post a uh, pandemic right so I think yeah. that's something we already spoke about in the sense of like, listen, um, we're getting to the point where a lot of these like factory type of uh, work is going to be delegated to some sort of robotic AI type of situation. More, more, more robotics, right? With, with um, systems in, in, in place to do uh, what uh, people used to do. In this, yes. And this would probably be the, um, I guess, the the big thing, right? So think about it this way. Um, a, a robot, you won't have to uh, ask it, you know, to, to work all night, right? It's going to do it. It's going to do it. You can program it to work, keep working, and do the work Give seven days a week. Yeah. On its way there. Right. And then the person that's really going to make bank are going to be the technicians working on it to give it its maintenance. That's all it is. So, this is hints of it, literally. You're just, you're yeah, just taking yeah. facts here. So, They're making a bot for vacation, and people have to gamify it or do a black market economy within the company. Right. Which is a foul for the workers. Company doesn't see it, doesn't care. But the, I'm, I'm worried for the guy in the trenches, man. Like Joe from the block, not that tech savvy, has to put this stuff in the app. Meanwhile, a bot scooping everything up. Exactly. So the way I'm looking at it is that they're not trying to pay like even now because of the pandemic, people were, were screaming for let me get 15 an hour, 20 an hour to doing for doing work that to be quite honest, it, it probably doesn't warrant that 15, 20 dollars an hour. Not that I, they, they shouldn't be compensated. But the issue here is that the reason why they're asking for 15, 20 dollars is because of inflation. Um, where the or trying to be competitive because of whatever's around them. Well, more than anything else, I would say the the economy or the the living um, conditions, living right? So, yeah. right. So, you know, you might think, oh, listen, I would love to be able to work for or get paid, you know, whatever the the regular price is for that type of work, but my apartment cost a certain amount um you know uh groceries is a certain amount and everything is going up except my wages right so you can be working at a mcdonald's or a factory and you know they're not going to pay you the amount that you want because unfortunately um that that type of uh job probably doesn't warrant the amount of money that you're asking for right so it, it's a double whammy so uh, i would say you're working somewhere that they gives you 13 bucks an hour, right? In in, New, in the state of New York, but your rent is worth 1300, and your one bedroom apartment is or studio is worth 1300. You give or take, you'd be ba you're basically working to pay and still have a roof over your head. Like super simplified. Obviously, it's a lot more complicated, but like uh, just in, in just in New York. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, bro. I I would say. Um, those type of things are, are exactly why, uh, people are, are, are up in arms about, you know, a livable wage and the inflation, especially in the metropolitan areas, like a New York city and stuff like that. It's like, LA, uh, Florida, yeah. yeah, any, any big city. It's like you, you're renting out a cardboard box and they're charging you crazy amount of money for that. And the living conditions probably aren't the best, but you know, it, you're near the job. You're literally right. working to have a roof, a so, cardboard roof over your head. So a lot of these companies were like, we, we just can't afford having these many people and we can't afford paying you all the same amount of money. Um, so they, they, as a company, they have to look uh, at their bottom line and say, what can we do? 
So the next best best thing in their mind of of uh, being able to produce or bang out the work and maybe cut down on cost. And in this case, that would be the um, payroll is the investing in. Right. It, or no, their payroll, which is also included their health insurance, their uh, if they have some sort of retirement plan and their um, uh, vacation time and stuff like that. So what they opt for, they, you know, less invest in, in machines to do the job of two or three people and we can lay off two or three people and it saves money. We can tell the, the robot to work. It's not going to complain. It's not going to take breaks. It doesn't need to take breaks. It, it, it doesn't tell you if it's cold, if it's hot or anything. It won't complain. And um, you don't have to pay vacation time or health insurance or anything else of that nature. So um, long run, you're going to probably be able to bang out more work and have to do, uh, have to pay any or the only payment you would really have to do is the maintenance on it which isn't uh everyday maintenance it's a once and once every certain you know metric you know or uh a lot of it's a it's a fixed amount it's yeah cons- it's so consistent. It, it's consistent exactly so that's that's the way they probably going about it um so i mean again that that's the way i'm looking at it i, I mean i could be wrong but um hey, but these are our opinions they're listening we are not bastions of of, of of righteousness that we're right all the time. No, we're only human. We're going to be wrong. Right. And that's why you're here to get our two cents about a situation. We're not here to give you solutions. We're here to give you two cents, okay? And have a good time. Absolutely. And with that, Alan, would you like to say good night to the people? Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our ramblings and thoughts we really appreciate your time and we hope you join us next time on another installment of lts podcast marco stay away remember wash your hands comb your hair and follow us on all the social medias that are in the description give us a like subscribe five stars on your favorite podcast catcher or wherever you listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube, okay? We're on YouTube, we're on the IG, we're on X, we're on this Twitter. And um, everything will be in the links. If you feel like giving us, you know, a little, you know, change over here for our coffee, links in the description. I appreciate it. From the bottom of my and our heart, Marcos and the squad bids you adieu.